In this video, we want to dig into a great sample file that covers the audit trail technique that we updated in 2020. And this has some additional performance improvements. And frankly, it has some lean design elements from Dick Hunter threaded in here. And so to help us with this, I have Calvin Moseman here today. Hey, Calvin here. So Calvin is awesome. He's worked up a sample file here that's part of our FileMaker training. And he's going to walk us through how this is set up and how it works. Now, this is different than the previous audit trail because in this audit trail, we are actually writing records to the audit log as we are tabbing through a record and making edits. So in the previous demo that we've had for previous years, the audit mechanism was really totally different and the audit records would be written at the time the record was committed. However, if you have a lot of data in the record, then waiting for it to only update the log at the commit well, that can cause some performance issues. So Calvin, why don't you walk us through this file? Okay, so this audit log is tracking not just changes to the field data, but also views, searches, and a lot of different stuff. And it's all of those records are created with a uh, script trigger. So let's just start off by demoing what we're doing here. I'm gonna do a search for John. The search performed a quick find in the first name, last name, and company field. So we see that we have found 17 contacts. If we go over here to our log, and I'm gonna open this in a second window, we'll see that the, at the end of our log, we have a, a search was performed, and you'll see that we saved the name John in there. And so we know what the person searched, and we also know what the results were. There were 17 results, and here's the 17 IDs. If someone were reviewing this uh, in the future and wanted to see what a one user was doing in the app, they could just look at this and say view and then uh, see what those 17 records are. And it, it opens up in a new window so they can go back to the log and see what else happened there. The, so the first thing we're tracking is searches and views. We're also tracking results from a perform find. So I'm going to select find up here or command F. And we can look for, I'm going to do the same search for John. But this time we only have four results because the search was only performed in that first name field. Let's go check out what happened in our log over here. And we'll see that the user Richard Carlton found four records. Here's those four IDs. And again, if I select view, I can see what, what those four records were. Even if we don't have the search, if there's nothing set in that search field, I can select view again, and no matter what we have in there, it's going to bring up those four fields because it's basing that result on those IDs, not on the find itself. Well, Calvin, you went through that pretty quick. You want to uh, show us specifically the fact that it's capturing those multiple record IDs as a single value list. Why don't you show that to folks? Right. Okay. So the, uh, if, if we look here, we'll see the, there were four found records and you'll see the four IDs for that contact are right here in this list. And the way that we are able to view those four records is that we have a relationship between the contact ID in the log and the contact ID in the contact table. And when we do a go to related record command, it will show all the results for every value in that list of IDs, which is pretty awesome uh, feature FileMaker has there for us. And this can be a length of any number of records. So if we look up here, we'll see there's 17 records here, uh, 17 values in that contact ID. If I go to the contact list even, if we go to the list view and do a find all command, we can come back over, uh, we'll see that there's 501 records in the found set. If we go back over to the log, we'll see that there's a log saying that all 501 records were found. And if we look at that value list here, it's 501 IDs. And when we say view, it's gonna bring all 501 records into the found set to show what we're looking at, to show what the results were of that find. So that's what you call a multi-key. Anytime you have a relationship with multiple values in a key field, that's called a multi-key. We actually talk about this in our relational section of videos, both multi-predicate keys 
and multi-keys and essentially where you have repeating values within a single field. Now, I think there are practical applications about how many records you could actually put in here. I'm not sure what the practical limit really is. It would be probably in the thousands very easily. Now, if you had a database with millions of records in it, you would want to write a script that would limit the number of records that you could return to a user. You don't really want a user returning 2 million records and having an audit trail on that because that's really just bad design. If you know you have a solution that's going to have millions of records and the user does a search like over here, then you're going to want to be able to do the search here, but also restrict it. And if it's too big, pop a dialogue to the user and say, hey, the found says is much too large. You need to narrow it down. And that would allow you to force a user to restrict the found set to a higher degree, allowing it for a found set that's maybe a thousand records or 500 records, as opposed to say two or 3 million records. So this demo is tracking the search results and views, which records we're viewing. And it also is tracking the edits to the record itself. I'm going to go ahead and create a new record. And this is going to be a, uh, for Johnny Appleseed. And we're going to give him a title of president, put him on limousine service company. So we, we changed the num number of fields here. And if I open up this audit log button, we'll see that we have a list of all of the fields that were edited and what those changes were. We'll also see that we have this record that when it was created, it was created at 1800 hours. So we have this really nice way of viewing those changes. Now, if I wanted to go back here and I'm going to just change it to John and let's change his name to Apple. And now he is an officer. And we look over in the audit log, we'll see that those changes were recorded here as well. So Johnny became John, Appleseed became Apple, President became Officer. What if I want to see just the changes on one field? I can type in name to see all the changes to a name field, or I could say uh, name first and do the searches and find all of the changes to that one field. And it limits the found set to changes for the one record that we're looking at at this point. So I'm going to clear out my search and it will show me all of the log entries for this record. Now, if I close this and go back to another record and come back, each time that uh, the record loads, it records that somebody viewed it. The new record was created, a number of changes were made, and these are the values in there, and then the record was viewed. I can even say, delete record, and it asks me, do I, are you sure you want to delete it? Yes. And that delete is even recorded. If we go over here to the end of the, to the, end of the log, we can see that a record was deleted here. And if we want to find out what happened there, I can just copy this contact ID and do a search on it. And we'll see the whole history of that contact. These were all the edits. This was the view and this was the deletion. So there's a lot of data you can go back. Even if it's deleted, you can go back and see what happened to any given record and, uh, and such. We're also tracking related records. So if I create a new note here, this is an email. We'll, we'll call this a follow-up and say this is the follow-up email. I'll save that and I'll create a new record as another record. And this is going to be the phone call record. And we'll say uh, good phone call. Uh, great talk. Now, if I go back over to, to my log, we'll see the, those changes. I'm going to select command J to see all the records again. We'll see that a new note was created for this record. And if I select view, it will not only bring up that record, it will also highlight which note I was looking at. So right now I selected to see the edits to the phone call uh, note. If I close that and select to view the email note, I'm going to select view, it will highlight the email note. It's focusing on the related record that the audit log is referring to, but it's also within the contact. So when we also go to audit log up here, 
you'll see those notes changes as well. And it all fits into that, uh, that history. The last thing I'd like to see is viewing the log from the perspective of the user or staff. So we've, we can see the log for a contact, for a specific contact here when we bring up this card window. And this is a nice way to view for one uh, record. Then there's the, the general log. We can see all the records, all the changes across the whole database. But then there's another thing that focuses on the user and we're tracking login and log out. If we scroll down, we can see this, this user has 162 records. And everything that we've been doing in here has been logged. We've got views, we've got edits, we've got a new record, and even the deleted record is recorded here. And you can kind of read this. It's made to be really readable so that somebody without maybe a lot of software experience who might not want to dig through the logs themselves can just look at this and kind of read it as a, a list of actions that were taken in the database. So that kind of wraps up an end-user walkthrough of the overall capabilities. In the next video, we're going to dive into an, an under-the-hood explanation of how this actually works and what makes it tick in the FileMaker platform.